as the American population ages, uh, as we hit the baby boom years, and that population evolves into um, uh, the elderly lifespan, um, those patients uh, are going to be increasingly faced with uh, with the burden of aortic stenosis. Patients with symptomatic uh, severe aortic stenosis have a significantly impaired quality of life. Symptoms associated with severe aortic stenosis can include shortness of breath or loss of breath with exertion, um, chest discomfort, chest tightness or heaviness with exertion, and they can even suffer lightheadedness and even sometimes pass out associated often again with exertion. This is a big group of patients. We can estimate that some, there may be as much as 300,000 patients with aortic stenosis every year in this country that are amenable to some form of therapy for the aortic valve. Unfortunately, once patients suffer uh, symptoms associated with severe aortic stenosis, not only is their quality of life impaired, but actually their expected quantity of life is significantly shortened. 50% of patients who are symptomatic from severe aortic stenosis who are treated medically will expire within one year, over 75% in two years. And the likelihood of living three years is almost zero. And so when you have patients who are really sick with aortic stenosis, you have to perform some form of intervention. It's a mechanical problem, it requires a mechanical solution. Aortic stenosis is typically treated with open heart surgery. Very few things in medicine give the outcomes that surgical aortic valve replacement give. But not everybody's a candidate for a conventional aortic valve replacement. What we're trying to do is augment that with uh, a less invasive procedure that will get us the same results with less of an impact or insult on the patient. It won't uh, impinge on the quality of life like an open procedure does. And we can deliver therapy to a patient population that before didn't receive therapy. Can I safely offer this patient open heart surgery? Would I consider this patient for open heart surgery? And if the answer is no, that plus the objective evidence makes the answer very simple. Those patients should be considered for Picatinny's valve technologies. Here at the University of Michigan CVC, we feel very privileged to have both Picatinny's valve technologies available to us, the Medtronic Core Valve and the Sapien Edwards Valve. And they both have the same function, to replace a diseased aortic valve by a percutaneous method, be it from the femoral area, subclavian, or even a direct aortic approach. The uh, transcutaneous Edwards valve is this actually basically the same valve as the implantable valve that we use. It's made of three leaflets, and in the implantable, the one that we use for open surgery, they put it in a rigid stent or holder. And the three leaflets are placed within that holder, the holder is placed within the aorta at the base where the valve sits. We cut the valve out, the disease valve, and then we implant this in. Well, for the transcutaneous, you can't have that rigid stent because you can't pass that up through the blood vessels, the tiny blood vessels moving up. So what they do is they put the um, same three leaflets in a flexible, expandable metal stent cage. And then they compress it down around a catheter with a balloon in it. And then we pass that up through a peripheral vessel, most commonly in the groin, pass it up through larger vessels into the aorta, down in through the valve. We put a separate balloon up first and then we blow the valve up so that the calcified rigid doors are expanded open. And then we set the new valve down inside and deploy or expand the new valve in using the balloon within the valve catheter. The joy of having this technology is being cognizant of the fact that you now have something to offer these patients. Once patients um, recover from their procedure, their expected quantity of life is, same, is the same as patients who don't have aortic stenosis. These patients are brought down to the room for this procedure. They're on oxygen, they're huffing, they're puffing. They're in extreme. And, and you do this procedure on them and uh, you wake them up and you extubate them and they're breathing fine. And, you know, they're happy. They can eat and they can sp complete sentences and they want to get up and do, move around and do things that they couldn't do before. So it has a tremendous impact. And the data we have from Europe is outstanding. Patients are doing extremely well and without any significant deterioration or dysfunction of the valves that have been placed percutaneously. What getting the percutaneous valve technology did for the University of Michigan is that 
added almost a last piece that we needed to deliver comprehensive care for patients with disease uh, spanning from the aortic valve all the way through to the terminal aorta. I mean, who wouldn't rather come in and have this procedure and go home in three days and return to their lifestyle like they had a hernia operation versus an open heart surgery where it takes you several months to recover. And so uh, this is huge for the patients. One of the foundations of the cardiovascular center here at the University of Michigan is the fact that we do work closely together to take care of our patients. We don't talk about my case or your case. We talk about our patient and how we're going to do the best to take care of that patient and provide them with the best uh, possible outcome. Our goal is to deliver care to your patient and get your patient back to you. And I think having access to this technology allows us to treat patients who may be older or may be somewhat sicker, are still struggling from the effects of valve disease, um, are not candidates for conventional therapies, but are, are suitable for a less invasive approach in order to get them back to uh, a normal quality of life.